Well, welcome to day 16. We're slowly coming to the, to the end of our, our time together. Um, the theme for today from Sir John uh, Templeton's book uh, is Forward into the Great Unknown. And the spiritual law, in his words, is the unknown before us may be a million times greater than what we now know. On the idea of the unknown, uh, the spiritual unknown, is a central theme in Sir John Templeton's thought. But it is also a central theme in many of the philosophically um, more highly developed religious traditions, as, as we'll see in a couple of minutes. Um, and for Sir John, um, the unknown was a, was a lure. Uh, it was a, a calling. It was a vocation. It, it, it's as if we were being asked to, to, to jump like a skydiver uh, out of a plane into, uh, perhaps even without a chute, into what would occur when, when we did that. We really have uh, no idea what new horizons of thought and experience await us when we venture out spiritually into the unknown. Um, but when, when talking about the unknown, it's important to distinguish between a couple of ideas, uh, between the unknown on one side and mystery on the other. Now, um, these words, of course, can be interchangeable, but the way in which I will be using them is I will use the idea of the unknown to refer to something that is, uh, in principle, knowable. It's just that we don't know it right now. In the year 1500, virtually no one, certainly in the year 1000, no one knew anything about electricity apart from lightning. Today, it's a commonplace of our lives. A mystery, uh, on the other hand, is something that in principle seems to be beyond uh, the capacity of the human intellect uh, to ever, ever uh, give the final uh, uh, word or analysis. Um, and uh, the human mind, uh, human beings, we, we pride ourselves on our rationalism, and a rationalistic approach to life in, implies that all of the mysteries of life will eventually be unraveled through the uh, uh, an analytical power of, uh, of reason. Um, and that does not generally ultimately fit into a, uh, a profoundly mystical view of life, which recognizes that perhaps there are limits to what reason can do. And so the notion of mystery serves as a check upon the pretensions of, a, of hyper-rationalism in its uh, attempt to explain the meaning of life. Sir so John uh, uses uh, these words in somewhat similar ways, and in one place he refers to um, the unknown, as he says, the unknown is not unknowable and is vastly greater than the known. Uh, so basically, this is the realm for scientific discovery. Uh, there are great mysteries in every science, but often and they yield to uh, better instruments, uh, better techniques, and more comprehensive theories. But mystery, on the other hand, as Sir John writes, how will we acknowledge the immense mystery of divinity? And so this notion of mystery uh, is often related with to the divine. Now, this is not a form of irrationalism, or uh, uh, a, in which, which would insist that uh, the divine is somehow so different from us that we could never understand it. it. It's just that the divine is infinite, and it's immense. And no matter what model we bring to bear upon it with the wonderful but still finite powers of our intellect, there will still always be depths of immensity that, that are beyond our grasp. Um, this has been expressed anciently and in many scriptural traditions, um, from the Upanishads, for instance, the Katha Upanishad, this is classically stated, uh, to quote from the Olivelle translation, the primeval one, the divine, who is hard to perceive, wrapped in mystery, hidden in the cave, residing within the impenetrable depth. That's a, that's a kind of an exclamation. It's actually an exclamation that, that is praise, because that's what mystery often elicits from us, awe, wonder, reverence, and praise. Famous words from the Tao Te Ching uh, in, Chinese, uh, in Chinese philosophy uh, it is, uh, are these. The way that can be followed is not the eternal way. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. 
So this, this notion of the, of the d divine uh, incomprehensibility is a theme that we find in many religious traditions. We, we find it in Islam and the writings of mystics such as Al-Ghazali and many others. We find it uh, in uh, the Christian tradition and the writings of figures like Karl Barth um, and uh, Meister Eckhart. Uh, the notion of nirguna bhakti and Sikhism and, uh, and, and some Hindu traditions, this notion of nirguna, it means the divine is beyond the capacity of our minds to model. And of course, our intellects are modeling instruments, and so that can be a bit chastening and perhaps even uh, a bit of a reproach against uh, the power of our intellects, but it is meant to uh, open us up to this, in a mood of reverence to to that which far transcends our experience. Um, and so uh, it was this attitude of reverence before mystery uh, that um, animated Sir John in his lifelong quest to uh, use, the, the, use the tools of science as well as the tools of religion, prayer, spirituality, to deepen our grasp of and appreciation of the immensity of the divine reality that underlies our life. And so mystery, uh, on one side, can reduce us to awe, but on the other side, that mystery is embroidered throughout our lives, our, our world, our experience, our minds, our bodies, the cosmos, actually uh, is, is an expression, an embodiment of that divine mystery. They're not apart from each other. They're actually non-dually united. And so if we have this reverent sensibility to the presence of the immense mystery in our world, in our cosmos, in our minds, we will start to recall and to remember the ancient symbolic language of the world's wisdom traditions. Anciently, uh, human beings would look at nature and they would read it as if it were a book of symbols teaching them uh, lessons about the ultimate nature of life. This, this, this capacity to see sympathies and resemblances, to see that a natural phenomenon represented a spiritual reality, this is a, a way of relating to life that we've pretty much lost in the modern world. We certainly began to lose it in the West about five, four to five centuries ago. And yet, uh, in ancient Western thought, in the Hermetic tradition in particular, the idea was stated succinctly that as above, so below. Whatever we see in this world, in the natural world, is a symbolic expression of the character of the divine. This is a principle, this principle of resemblance, of, of sympathetic correspondence between the divine and the created order runs through the Upanishads as well and through the Vedas and many other sacred traditions. Judy, the, the scriptures of Judaism can be read in this, in this way as well, as well as Islam. And uh, in the few, in the minute or two left to us, I'd, I'd like to try to at least give you a, a, a kind of a dictionary that gives the translations between the divine uh, and, the, and the created order. Um, one of the great masters of the comparative method in religious studies, uh, Mircea Iliada, uh, uh, one of the great figures uh, in my field uh, was an expert in reading uh, this book of nature. And, uh, and I will then suggest to you now uh, just a few of these symbolic correspondences. So um, if we were to look at um, the flowing downhill of water, when water flows downhill, we can look at it as scientists, if you will, but actually its ability to adapt to its environment models for us the way in which, according to Taoism, we can live a stress-free uh, and uh, fulfilled life uh, in an attitude of openness and surrender to the way things are. When we look at the sun, we may see an object that, uh, that uh, astr astronomy studies, but we may also see the sun as a kind of, uh, as, this, uh, as corresponding to our eye, as giving light to our eye and giving uh, as the light of, of revelation, as the light of revelation. Um, if we uh, look at the phases of the moon, 
that regular pattern whereby the moon goes seems to, to, to be born and to die over and over again, this anciently was taken as a, 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 re, a revelation, a hint that life does not end with death. The twinkling of the stars in the sky at night suggests intelligences raised above the earth, sending down guidance and intuition.